Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to this very special bonus episode of Jeff Does Vegas. And a big welcome uh, to those of you who are uh, checking out the video version of this uh, bonus episode of the podcast. Uh, tuning in on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeff Does Vegas. Thank you for taking time to uh, come and check out my ugly mug. I uh, wanted to put together uh, a a little bit of an update for you guys and let you know what's going on with the podcast. There is a, a ton of stuff happening with the podcast right now. And as such, for the next couple of weeks, I'm actually not going to be putting out a new episode. So I thought I kind of owed it to you guys to explain as to uh, exactly what was going to be going on with that, as to why that was happening. I uh, wanted to talk about some of the most recent episodes of the podcast that we put out in case you've missed out on anything. We've put out some really, really cool stuff over the last few weeks. I uh, wanted to talk about the current Vegas trip that I am on. By the time you're listening to this episode of the podcast, I will already be on that trip, if you're watching the video, I will be getting ready to head out on that trip. Very, very exciting. It's going to be a busy trip. Not much of a vacation. This is going to be more like a, a working trip to Vegas. So I'm really excited about that. Going to tell you guys about what I've got going on with that. Uh, talk about some of the upcoming episodes of the podcast and upcoming interviews, as well as all the other things that are going on with the podcast right now. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Let's start off by uh, taking a little trip back in time and talking about some of the uh, the episodes that we've released over the last several weeks. We really hit the ground running here in 2023 in the new year, putting out a new episode every week since the beginning of January. And it's so much fun putting together these episodes for you guys. But um, right now, things are just getting so, so busy with what's happening that, quite frankly, I, I just I haven't had a chance to plan anything. So um, let's take a little trip back in time, a little rewind, if you will, and talk about some of the episodes uh, that we have uh, recently released here at Jeff Does Vegas. We'll start off with our most recent episode uh, entitled VIP Casino Comps and Loyalty Rewards. This was a chat with uh, Sean Coomer of MilesToMemories.com. Now, for those who aren't familiar, Sean runs this website, MilesToMemories.com, where he talks about maximizing travel rewards. You know, it seems everybody's got a rewards card these days of some sort, whether it's flights or whether it's hotels or some sort of credit card that earns you points where you can earn travel. Sean runs this website and does a podcast all about it, um, talking about how to maximize these rewards. And, and it's some really interesting stuff. Now, Sean is also a Las Vegas native, and he's quite well-versed in the world of casino comps and loyalty programs with casinos. And I've had a lot of emails from listeners and people who have reached out to me via social media and have said, Jeff, you should really do an episode about how to earn casino comps and how that works. And despite being a member of several different of these programs, I mean, I'm a member of Caesars Rewards and MGM Rewards, and I think I'm a member of Grazi at the Venetian and Palazzo, and I, I know I'm a member of Identity at the Cosmo, which is going to be going away very soon. So uh, despite all of that, I have no idea how any of this actually works. I just, the simplest terms I know is put your card in the machine, spend lots of money on gambling, and get free stuff. And that that's basically the gist of it. But Sean and I went in depth on our discussion on uh, the right and wrong ways to earn comps, good ways to earn status. We talked about status matching and whether or not things like status matching uh, are devaluing these programs. We, we talked a little bit about the um, the future of Las Vegas and, and some things that are going on in the city. It was a really, really good conversation. So would highly recommend you jump into the archives and check that episode out. Um, I was also joined by Adam Bauer, a.k.a. Travel Fanboy. Now, Adam was on the podcast about a year ago. We did an episode titled Going Through Changes, and Adam and I talked about some of the big changes coming to Las Vegas, particularly with um, the sale of the Cosmopolitan to MGM, uh, the sale of the Mirage to Hard Rock had just been announced. As well, there was some rebranding going on with Bally's turning into Horseshoe Las Vegas. 
All of these things have basically happened or are in progress, so I thought it would be fun to have Adam back on the podcast to talk about it. We've both been to Vegas since the sales have gone through and since the rebranding has started. So we had a, a little bit of a conversation talking about whether or not um, people were going to notice these changes, if there had been any noticeable changes, um, the effect that these changes had had on the properties, things like that, had a really good conversation about that. And then we also talked about some things that were going to be happening in Las Vegas over the next 12 months or so, including the opening of the MSG Sphere, which is supposed to be this really, really cool new live music venue that's like a $2 billion venue, um, 17,000 seat uh, venue that's going to be the most technologically advanced live music venue in the world with the biggest LED screen in the world. If you were watching the Super Bowl, you maybe saw the announcement that U2 was going to be opening this venue in the fall as well. It's going to be um, a part of the Vegas Grand Prix, the Formula One race that's coming to Las Vegas. And Adam and I talked about that. We also talked about Super Bowl and the effect that these these big, large-scale sporting events are happening on the city of Las Vegas. It, it Really great conversation, so I would highly recommend you go and, and check that one out as well. Um, Dr. Joseph Fitzanakis joined me. He is a professor of intelligence and security studies at Coastal Carolina University. I had to write that down on the script because it's such a, a long title. Um, he came on the podcast to talk to me about Area 51, and Janet Airlines. Now, there is a Vegas connection to Area 51 in that Area 51, which is this um, super secret military base, which is possibly the uh, worst kept secret in the history of the military, is about 85 or 90 miles away from Las Vegas, northwest, I believe, in the desert. And this is where, if you believe pop culture and you believe conspiracy theorists, this is where the U.S. government stores alien bodies and alien spacecraft and they reverse engineer alien technology. Um, we talked about Area 51 and some of the things going on there. We also had a conversation about Janet Airlines. Now, if you've ever flown into Las Vegas or you've been sitting at the airport waiting for your flight, you've probably seen the Janet Airlines aircraft they're white Boeing 737s with a, a red stripe painted down the side of the aircraft. They don't have any kind of airline markings or um, and very, very limited serial numbers and identification on them. These are the aircraft that actually ferry Area 51 workers back and forth between Las Vegas and Area 51. So we went in depth. We talked about Area 51 and the history of the base and some of the things that are going on. There it was a really great conversation. Had a wonderful chat with Claire White from the Mob Museum. Claire is the director of education and programs at the Mob Museum. And um, Claire also used to work at the Liberace Museum when it was open in Las Vegas. And Liberace is one of those entertainers that, oddly enough, when it comes to Las Vegas, he kind of flies under the radar, if you will. Um, He's not really as ingrained in the history of Las Vegas the way other entertainers are, say uh, the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Joey Bishop or Elvis Presley. I mean, you don't see Liberace impersonators on the strip posing for pictures with people or Liberace tribute shows at any of the, the Vegas casinos. But Liberace has a, a, a very in-depth history in the city of Las Vegas and in the entertainment scene. So Claire took us in depth on that and went really, really far into the history of Liberace. We talked about uh, some of his early performances. We talked about his first appearances in Las Vegas. We talked about his personal life. We talked about the special connection that he had with the fans. We talked about his personality. It, it was really a, a great conversation. So again, I, I would I would highly recommend that you go and uh, and check that one out. I uh, also had the pleasure of talking to John Morris, who runs a website called wheelchairtravel.org. John's got an absolutely incredible story and background, and he runs this website that's all about accessible travel and being a wheelchair traveler. And I had seen several folks posting in the various Vegas Facebook groups that I'm a part of concerned about traveling to Las Vegas as a person with mobility issues or a person um, in a wheelchair. And so 
And I can see where that comes from, because when you you watch video or you see Vegas on TV, you see a lot of walking, you see a lot of travel, you see a lot of stairs, you see um, escalators. It, it doesn't look like it's super easy to get around. So I had John on the podcast to have a conversation about this. And, and not only is John uh, a wheelchair travel um, advocate, but he's also a frequent Vegas visitor. He goes to Las Vegas several times a year. So had a wonderful conversation. We we talked all about what it's like trying to uh, make your way around Las Vegas up and down the strip. Um, as a wheelchair user, we talked about public transportation in Las Vegas as a wheelchair user. We talked about accessibility in the various hotels and casinos and attractions. And then we also went in depth on air travel because Air travel as a person with mobility issues is very, very challenging. So it was really interesting to have this conversation with John. And and some of you may or may not know this about myself. My my real job when I'm not doing this podcast involves working for an airline here in Canada. So to get that uh, conversation about wheelchair travel from the perspective of somebody who who lives it. And again, John is a frequent traveler. He's a world traveler. He's all over the place. So definitely the guy to be talking to uh, when it comes to this. Um, again, had an amazing conversation with John about all of this. And then, of course, world famous Jeff does Vegas trip reports. <laughs> We've released a couple of those here in the last uh, couple of months, including uh, from my most recent trip back at the end of January and my stay at Planet Hollywood. Um, had a great time there and a great stay for the most part. A couple of little quirks about the rooms. Had some wonderful meals while I was in town. Got to check out some very cool shows. And then uh, the December trip report, which was a huge trip report. That was um, my annual birthday extravaganza trip, I, as I call it. Uh, my wife and I went to Vegas back in December. We were there for almost a, a week. We saw some absolutely incredible shows. We ate some amazing meals. Um, we did a lot of walking as much as we could, because at the time my wife was just recovering from a, a foot injury and a procedure on her foot. So we couldn't do as much walking as we normally would, but um, still managed to do a, a fair bit of trekking around town. So again, all of these episodes and all of the previous episodes all the way back to the beginning are available um, in the archives at jeffdoesvegas.com. You can go on the website and you can listen all the way back to episode one, although I wouldn't recommend it because the first like five or six episodes are a little bit rough. So um, I, I, I always, when people ask me about listening to the podcast and going back to the beginning, I always say, you know what, skip like the first four or five episodes start around episode six that that's the best way to do it um you may also notice as well if you are um not a frequent visitor to the website but you were there within the last few months but you haven't been there recently there have been some changes on the website a bit of a redesign uh, it's a little easier to navigate i've broken the um the podcast out by seasons so essentially each year is a season right now we're into season number five of the podcast so um you can go back you can search tags you can search uh, by topics. It's it's all basically there. So again, uh, go to the website, jeffdoesvegas.com, or if you want to go into the archives as well, uh, you can find the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, whether it's uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Podbean or any of the big podcast apps, you can find it there. You can just search out Jeff Does Vegas. <laughs> All right, so I mentioned off the top of this episode that um, by the time you're listening to the podcast version of this episode, I will already be in Las Vegas. If you're watching the YouTube version, I will be prepping for a trip to Las Vegas. This is going to be a, a, a huge trip. I'm going to be there uh, for about a week, which is the longest amount of time I think I've ever spent in Las Vegas. Most of my trips are usually around the three-day mark, sometimes the two-day mark, um, at the very most four days. I know after my wife and I hadn't been to Vegas through COVID and all the restrictions and everything, our first trip back after that was, uh, it was, it was almost seven days. It was a long, long trip and it felt long. Like by the end of it, we were, we were done. We were ready to go home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but this is going to be a long trip. It's going to be a, a, 
a combination work and play trip, which uh, it's tough when you're a guy like me who goes to Vegas for fun. Um, it's hard to to have to be there and be working, but it, it is going to be a, a combo work play trip. Uh, my wife, Kim, she's going to join me for the first few days of the trip. She's going to fly out there with me, and then she's going to fly home um, on uh, on Tuesday. We're flying out on a Saturday. We're going to be there over a weekend, which is, again, a little bit different for us. We're usually there uh, during the week. Um, it's going to be it's NASCAR weekend. I am i got to be honest, I'm not really looking forward to that. <laughs> I think it's, pardon my French, but I think it's going to be an absolute shit show um, along the strip. So uh, we fly in, we, we get in on Saturday, um, early afternoon, March the 4th. I'm thinking we might decide to spend some time away from the strip on the Saturday night and maybe even on the Sunday night, just because of the, the insanity that, that is going to be occurring. But, um, anyways, my wife's going to be along with me for the first few days of the trip, then she's going to fly home and then I'm going to be on my own for the remainder of the trip, but I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be very, very busy because, uh, I'm attending a conference and I know what most people think when you say you're going to a conference in Las Vegas, you're like, oh yeah, sure. Conference in Las Vegas. Uh-huh. Yeah, that whatever. No, this is legit uh, a, a conference. I'm going to be attending um, a conference called Podcast Movement Evolutions. Now, this is a conference that I attended uh, back in February of 2020 before the whole world shut down. I went to Los Angeles for this conference and it was the the debut of Podcast Movement Evolutions. Podcast Movement is a, a great group that runs a website. I believe it's podcastmovement.com. Um, just Google it. You'll see it. If you're into podcasting at all, these guys are excellent. There's tons of great podcast industry information. There's lots of great tips and tricks on the website, as well. There's information on the conferences that they run. Now, they run uh, two conferences a year. They run the Podcast Movement Evolutions Conference, which has twice been in Los Angeles and is now in Las Vegas. Um, and then they also run a conference just called Podcast Movement, which this year is coming up in Denver. And I'm also going to be attending that one. It's in August, but I digress. Um, the conference is being held at the Westgate, north end of the Strip. If you're familiar with the Westgate, used to be the International Hotel, the Las Vegas Hilton, the LVH. It's got a very storied history in Las Vegas. Of course, the International was the home of Elvis for about a billion shows in a row that he sold out there. Um, it was also used to be at one time, it was the home of uh, Star Trek, the experience, which if you're a Trekkie was one of the coolest experiences in the world. Um, very, very cool. Jump on YouTube and go search out, um, search out Star Trek experience, Las Vegas Hilton. You're going to see some absolutely amazing stuff. But anyways, um, this conference has got, tons of great sessions that I want to attend that, that essentially it's, it's to try to learn. I mean, anybody that's in any kind of profession, if you have an opportunity to attend a conference or a convention where you get the chance to go into these sessions with professionals and learn from them and take a whole lot of notes and fill your brain with lots of great information, that's outstanding as well it's also great to be able to sit down and network with other people who are in the podcast space. Um, it's sometimes it's also, it's a little bit affirming as well. You, you kind of learn that you're on the right track. I know when I attended um, evolutions in Los Angeles back in 2020, I was only two years, you know, a year and a bit uh, into doing um, Jeff does Vegas. And when you get into podcasting, you, you, do a lot of reading, you do a lot of research and you learn about all of these different, um, things that are out there. And you start seeing all these other podcasters that are out there, people who are claiming that they're getting thousands of downloads immediately after they launch. And sometimes you sort of feel, um, kind of beaten down and a little bit insignificant. And you start to wonder, am I on the right track? Getting an opportunity to sit down with professionals and tell them about what you're doing and tell them about where you're at, you kind of learn, Hey, you know what? I am on the right track. And as well, anytime that you have an opportunity to share some of your own knowledge with someone else, 
that's always a lot of fun as well. So this is going to be a, a, a great opportunity for me to be able to sit down and do some networking and have some conversations with some other podcasters and learn about what they're doing and share with them what I'm doing. It's going to be excellent. I, I think I'm trying to, I think I'm setting myself up. I hate to say I'm setting myself up for failure with the number of sessions that I want to attend, but they have crammed so many incredible sessions into these four days that they're running it. Basically, it's three full days. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with um, Tuesday just kind of being some some smaller sessions and and some pre-sessions. Um, I went through their schedule and I'm like, I want to see this and I want to do this and I want to go to this one and I want to attend this schedule or this session, I should say. And it's like five sessions a day. And I'm thinking my brain is just going to be, there's there's no way I can ass- attend this many sessions in a day. So I think I'm going to have to go back over it and scale it back a little bit. Um, the other cool thing about these events is the parties. And if you've ever attended any kind of big conference or, or big uh, convention, particularly if you've ever been to one in Las Vegas, um, I attended several years ago. I went to... Uh, NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters. And I also went to another one that was uh, radio and internet um, networking that was all about uh, an internet radio and podcasting stuff. That was several years ago. But these events, they they put on some very, very cool parties. And um, this one, I'm going to feel like the least cool human being in the world because uh, one of the parties is at Dre, the nightclub, I think it's called Dre, Dre or Dre's. Again, not cool enough to know. Uh, it's the uh, the the nightclub or outdoor nightclub. I think there's a pool there as well, and that is uh, on the the roof or on the top level of the Cromwell, uh, right at the corner of Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard. Again, not cool enough to normally go to something like that or a place like that. You know how many years it's been since I've been into a nightclub? A lot. <laughs> I used to go to nightclubs often, way back in my radio days. I'd go to the nightclub all the time. Usually I was being paid to be there, which was really cool. But um, it has been a very long time since I've been to a nightclub. I'm an old man. I'm I'm 47. I, I'm, I go to nightclubs. It's loud. You can't have a conversation. The drinks are expensive. There's just, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm not cool enough, but I will be going to this because how often do you get an opportunity to go to a place like Dre when you're a 47 year old dude like me, who's the least hip person in the room. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that is, uh, that party's being hosted by iHeart, which if you're into, uh, the media world at all, you're very familiar with who iHeart is. They are one of the biggest media conglomerates in the world. Uh, they've gotten very, very heavy into the world of podcasting. Um, and so, and they actually, they run some of the coolest podcasts. There's podcasts that, that they run that I'm huge fan of. So I'm hoping that maybe they bring some of the people from these podcasts in. Um, iHeart is in charge of the uh, Fake Doctors, Real Friends podcast with um, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, the Scrubs podcast. I love that podcast. Such a great podcast. Uh, as well, they also um, distribute Disgraceland, which is a, a really, really cool podcast all about music history. Uh, they go in depth. I actually, if you've listened to any of my uh, Sin City Stories podcast episodes, which that's something that I would love to get back to working on, but I just, they, they're they so time consuming and take up so much time. Anyways, um, if you've ever listened to any of the Sin City Stories podcast, any of those episodes, I kind of um, base those, the idea of those on disgrace land and on the um how they're put together they, they tell a story they're not just a, a straight conversational podcast or an interview podcast they tell a story there's vocal effects there's music it, it's really cool stuff anyways um the party at dre's is being hosted by iheart which is going to be awesome and then simplecast which is another podcast distribution um group they're going to be hosting a party at a place called peyote which is in container park on east fremont so uh that's going to be a lot of fun to attend as well so it's going to be a, a an excellent convention and an excellent conference and i really i'm i'm super excited to be able to go and when they announced it was going to be in las vegas this year i was like dude I got to go. I can't not go. Vegas is my city. I do a podcast about Las Vegas. 
I need to be at this conference. So um, it's going to be a great time. And, and I can't wait to to be able to hang out with some people in Las Vegas and uh, maybe go hit the town and do some informal get togethers. And it, it's going to be crazy. The worst part about it, and every convention I've been to in Las Vegas does this, they have a big party on the night before. Let's say Wednesday night. Okay. Wednesday night is the iHeart party at Dre's. Okay. Starts at eight o'clock, goes till 11. Guaranteed, if people don't stay at Dre's, they're going to go elsewhere on the strip. There's going to be drinking. There's going to be partying. There's going to be lots of stuff going on. Craziness, insanity. You know how it goes. Um, first session on Thursday morning that I want to attend is at nine o'clock in the morning. That's terrible planning. Who's planning this? <laughs> <laughs> they they should be starting these sessions at like noon the day after these parties. They should not be starting them at nine o'clock in the morning. That even the one that I was at in 2020 at Los Angeles, the big party that was hosted by iHeart was not at a big nightclub. It was at this cool underground place. I can't even remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it was in this really cool underground bar slash nightclub kind of thing. Andy Dick showed up. It was very weird. Uh, I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. Andy Dick really did show up. Um, the next morning for that nine o'clock session, <laughs> that was a room full of very rough looking people. Everyone was just like, they were walking around going, I need coffee. I need coffee so badly right now. It was, it was hilariously terrible. So Vegas is going to be worse absolutely worse but it's going to be an excellent time so i'm so looking forward to uh, to podcast movement evolutions um also looking forward to this uh, my wife and i are going to be staying at luxor on this trip um and if you know vegas if you're familiar at all and you're thinking jeff your conference is at the westgate you're staying at the luxor the only way you could really be any further away from your home base and your conference is if the conference was at sahara and you were staying at Mandalay Bay, um, yes, you would be right. Uh, it is insane. But being NASCAR weekend, when I booked the room, Luxor was the most reasonably priced place along the Strip. Um, it was also, uh, it, it just, it worked out I had comps for a couple of days of the trip, I think three days of the trip. So um, I'm actually going to be able to... Uh, take advantage of those comps for this trip. So uh, right now, if I were to jump on and check the room rates for that weekend, it's like $300 a night at Luxor. So I booked this way, way early, knowing that I was going to be attending this convention. Luxor is one of those properties that um, people shit all over for some reason. And there's a couple, I'm not going to name names, but there are a couple of Vegas vloggers who really are, are, not fans of the Luxor at all. And when I say that, I'm putting it nicely. Um, there's one particular vlogger out there who's big on TikTok, who's big on YouTube, and they will put out a video every couple of months and we'll title it, this is your bi-monthly reminder that the Luxor is the worst hotel to stay at in Las Vegas. It's not. I've stayed at the Luxor a ton of times and I really like staying at the Luxor. The property has some good amenities. The gaming floor is good. There's some nice bars. Um, the rooms are okay. I have stayed in both uh, rooms in the pyramid, and I've also stayed in tower rooms. And I've had good experiences with both. The only time I've ever had a negative experience at the Luxor was um, on a trip. It was uh, five years ago. Five years ago? Yeah, it was 2018. And um, they shut the water off to the tower that we were staying in. And so my wife and I came back to the room after being gone from like, we were gone. We were there with friends. We were in Vegas with a, with a, another couple. And so we were gone from like, I don't know, like one 30 in the afternoon until like two in the morning. By the time we got back, we were out shopping and we were, uh, we went out for dinner and we went to shows and, and we were out, afterwards and and it was uh it was busy and so we get back to the room and it's like two in the morning and of course gotta go to the bathroom right gotta pee it's two o'clock in the morning go in the room and uh do my deal and flush the toilet 
and then go over to the sink, turn the tap on to wash my hands. And I put my hands out and there's nothing like there's nothing coming out of the tap. And if you've ever had that experience where something isn't working the way it's supposed to work, it, it's, it's like, it breaks your brain. Right? So <laughs> I actually, I literally, I pulled like an IT move with the water taps. I, I turned the taps off and then I turned them back on again. Well, of course it didn't work and still nothing came out. So I walk out into the room and I look at my wife and I go, there's no water. And she looks at me like, what, what are you saying? What do you mean? There's no water. And I said, there's no water. So I phone the front desk and I say, Hey, it's, uh, it's Jeff. I'm in room, blah, 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 uh, in the, this tower and there's no water. And the person says, yes, it's shut off for maintenance. And I said, okay, well, were you going to tell us like, what were you going to like, what? And so she said, well, there's, there was a, a notice that came up, an electronic notice that came up on the TV today. And I said, well, okay, so I have not turned my TV on at all today. I got up this morning. I left for, I had breakfast. I had a coffee. I sat by the pool, came back to the room. And then I've been gone since like one thirty this afternoon. I have not, um, I've not turned my TV on all day. So how would I know? There's no, there was no paper under the door. There was nothing. And, and she said, Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. And I said, well, wh like, what am I supposed to do? Like I, uh, to flush my toilet or to wash my hands or whatever. Well, we can send some water up for you. Okay. That's great. I, I appreciate you can send some water up for me. So I'm thinking they're going to send up like the big, big bottles of water, right? Like the really big, the, the two liter or one liter bottles of water. No, some poor security guy shows up at my door very, very quiet knock, right? That's the knock on my door at two in the morning. And he's got like six or eight of those little casino bottles of water, like the little ones that they give you when you're sitting and playing poker or playing blackjack or whatever. <laughs> and I'm looking at going, what am I going to do with this? I can't flush a toilet with this and I can't, I can't wash my hands with it. I, I, I'm barely going to be able to brush my teeth with it. It was just, it was the most ridiculous thing in the world. And the worst part about it was I wasted my one toilet flush on a pee. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Now that same trip was also the trip where there was no hot water the one morning we got up. And I think that was actually the same morning prior to us coming home and finding the water shut off. Um, that morning, I think it was that morning, there was no hot water in the, uh, in the room at all. I turned the shower on and I waited for 10 minutes and it was not getting hot and I needed a shower. So I jumped in and I had a cold shower. And, and again, that was another one where I phoned the front desk and, uh, and they did, they waived my resort fees for that trip, which was nice of them, I thought, but still, um, other than that though, that's the only negative experience that I've ever had at the Luxor. I love the Luxor. I don't recommend it for first timers going to Vegas just because of the location it's really far away out of the action. I usually will recommend something more mid strip, but for someone like me who's been there a ton of times and is just really looking for a place to sleep, um, and is coming to town for a, a conference, the Luxor is going to be, it's going to be just fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, we got a ton of other stuff planned for this trip though. It's going to be a, a, a crammed full trip with my wife and I being in town. Uh, we are going to the Mayfair, Slup uh, Mayfair supper club easy for me to say the Mayfair supper club at the Bellagio. Um, we are going to have dinner there, which we are super excited about. We have wanted to go to the Mayfair for literally three years. Um, we were supposed to go to the Mayfair the week that Vegas shut down back in 2020 when everything with the world shut down, as I like to say, when Las Vegas closed and everything shut down, we were supposed to be in Vegas that week. We were supposed to fly to Vegas the Saturday, I think the Saturday or the Sunday before everything closed down. And uh, we were going to be in Vegas for like five days. Um, we were going to be going to the Mayfair Supper Club on that trip. Haven't had a chance to go since then. And part of the reason we haven't gone since then is uh, one of our very good friends. You've heard me talk about her on the podcast. I interviewed her way, way back near the beginning, Lisa Marie Smith. She 
performs at the Mayfair Supper Club. Now, she took a bit of a break from performing at the Mayfair. She had a bunch of other stuff going on in her life. She is now back performing at the Mayfair. So we are going to go to the Mayfair Supper Club. And by all accounts, everyone I've talked to about the Mayfair and reviews that I've seen and videos that I've seen and things that people have put together and, and reviews are just amazing. So between the food, the drinks, and of course the view, because you're you're looking right out at the Bellagio fountains behind where the performance is happening and dinners being served all throughout and everything like that, we're so looking forward to it. Going into it knowing that this is not a cheap meal out. But as I have said on previous podcasts and trip reports, when it comes to food and meals and experiences with meals, that's my wife's bread and butter and mine and my wife's bread and butter. We love going out for a good meal and I have less of a problem spending $250 on a really, really nice meal and a nice experience than I do spending $25 on two Starbucks coffees and two pastries which is also something that happens when you go to Las Vegas. So anyways, we're going to be at the Mayfair. That's going to be our our uh, Sunday night dinner. We're so looking forward to it. That's going to be an excellent time. Um, we're also planning on heading to Don't Tell Mama on uh, Fremont Street. Um, a buddy of ours, good friend of ours, Kenny Davidson, who is uh, also the musical director for uh, Monday's Dark, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, Kenny... Uh, hosts uh, a show every Friday night at the Tuscany, which I'm also going to be in town and able to attend at the end of my trip. That's going to be a good time. Um, Kenny performs every Wednesday and Saturday night at Don't Tell Mama. Don't Tell Mama is like an open mic piano bar. So yes, Kenny performs. Yes, the bartenders at the uh, at Don't Tell Mama perform. But then if you want to sing a song, you can get up and perform, which is kind of cool. And Kenny is this guy... He's like a musical savant. It's amazing to watch him work at Don't Tell Mama because somebody will request a song that they want to perform and Kenny be like, I don't really know that one. He'll pull out his iPhone and he'll play it on Apple Music and he'll listen to it and he'll listen to it once and then he knows it. It's, it's amazing. It's hilariously amazing to watch. So anyways, uh, we're going to be going and doing that probably on Saturday night. That'll be a good opportunity to get the hell away from the strip on NASCAR weekend. Going down to Fremont Street, I don't know if it's going to be any less weird or busy, but should be a good time. Um, we're also planning, of course, on taking in Monday's Dark. That is at the space. Um, frequent listeners of the podcast, very familiar with Monday's Dark, very familiar with the space. If you're not, I'll run it through really quick for you. Uh, my good pal, Mark Chinook, my Canadian brother from another mother. He um, created this show almost 10 years ago called Monday's Dark, and it's a charity show uh, featuring the best of Las Vegas entertainers, people from all over Vegas, all up and down the strip. They come in, they perform and um, they raise $10,000 in 90 minutes for a local charity. They do this twice a month. They used to do it once a month. They now do it twice a month, which is really, really cool. They pick a different musical theme for uh, every show. They they go through, they pick a different theme, uh, whether it's artists or, or theming the songs. This particular one, the theme is favorite food groups. So we're talking about artists like Meatloaf. The Black Eyed Peas, the Cranberries, Cake, Salt and Pepper. It's going to be epic. Uh, tickets start at just 20 bucks for Monday's Dark, and you can go to mondaysdark.com if you're going to be in Las Vegas, whether for this particular Monday's Dark or or any Monday's Dark, you can go to mondaysdark.com and get details on uh, tickets and showtimes and and see all the information on that. And if you, you're you not going to be in Vegas, uh, they started doing this during COVID when they couldn't have big audiences and they have carried it through now. Uh, they stream it live on the website at mondaysdark.com. So you can actually watch the show and see what you're getting into when it comes to Monday's Dark. It's really, really cool. Um, now, other than the Mayfair, meal-wise, uh, my wife and I haven't really made any plans as of yet. Um, our last trip when we were in Vegas, we focused mainly on new places. Um, and if you listen to that trip report, you'll notice that we checked out a ton of spots that we had never been to before, which was kind of cool to do. It's when you go somewhere often, like us going to Vegas or me going to Vegas, you um, you can kind of find yourself falling into a rut. So it's kind of nice to be able to, to get out of that rut and do some different stuff. But at the same time, you're there for a limited amount of time, so you you miss out on, on going to some of your favorites, which 
is what kind of happened on this last trip uh, in December with my wife and I. So for this trip, I think we're probably going to end up hitting up some of our favorite spots from previous trips. Uh, we love Husong's Cantina. Mexican in the shops of Mandalay Bay is absolutely excellent. We've missed it the last trip, last couple of trips even. Um, we haven't had a chance to go. So we're going to do that again on this trip. Um, and staying at the Luxor is perfect because Shops Mandalay Bay is right there. So it's easy to get to. We can go there before we head out for the night for a show or whatever. Um, we'll probably do Rira Irish pub in, uh, Shops Mandalay Bay as well. This is another place we've gone the last couple of trips. Uh, we've gone in and just gone for a quick bite to eat, a couple of beers and hang out with the Black Donnelly's who are the, the house band at Rira. Um, we haven't had a chance to go in and really have a meal and have a sit down. So I think we're going to try and do that on this trip. Uh, the Henry at the Cosmo is another place that we love to go for breakfast. So we'll probably try and do that on this trip. It's a little harder again, staying at the Luxor, getting all the way to the Cosmo in the morning can be a little difficult. You have to get up early, which can be really difficult, uh, but we'll make that happen. And then of course, Ellis Island is a staple for us. So we will probably end up uh, doing that as well uh, for this particular trip when it comes to our meals. All right, so um, part of this trip is going to include doing a whole lot of interviews for the podcast. I previously would usually make a habit of trying to do one or two interviews when I would go to Vegas, and, and it worked out great because when I would come back from a trip, I would have uh, a couple of uh, interviews in the can, and then I would also have a, a trip report ready to go. I'd have uh, material for that trip report. And so one Vegas trip would get me like three weeks worth of, uh, of material for the show. This is going to be uh, a crazy, crazy trip. Uh, I, again, I, you know, I was mentioning that I had um, thought I was maybe getting a little in over my head when it came to the sessions for podcast movement. I'm kind of wondering if I'm maybe doing the same with this. I, I've got lots of preparation that I need to do before I go on this trip and very little time to do it, um, which is also part of the reason that I'm not going to be doing any new episodes here for the next little while and giving you this little bonus episode. Um, let's talk about some of the interviews that I do have planned for this trip. Uh, Vin A, a.k.a. Vincent Joseph of the Bronx Wanderers. Now I've had Vin on the podcast a couple of times in the past. Um, we talked about uh, Bronx Wanderers way back in the day when they were headlining at uh, the showroom at the link. Um, I think they were at the link. Yeah, they were at the link at that time, or maybe they were at Harris. Mm, I can't remember. They were at one of those showrooms. Uh, man, no, no, it was the link. Definitely the link that they were at. <laughs> Time flies and these guys bounce around so much. I don't know where they're at half the time. Anyways, um, I had talked to Vin way back in the, I think the season one of the podcast. And then during the pandemic, we had a conversation again. We talked about some of the stuff that Vin was working on at that point. The Bronx Wanderers were working on things like that. Um, since the last time I had Vin on the show, a lot has changed in the world of Vegas entertainment. And so one of the things that's changed and I've talked about it on past episodes of the podcast is uh, live entertainment and how live entertainment has changed in Vegas. It used to be there were a lot of these um, smaller tier artists, groups like the Bronx Wanderers or Tenors of Rock, um, shows like that, or some of the lower tier um, shows like Crazy Girls, things like that, shows like that that were playing along the Vegas Strip that were reasonably priced for tickets. A lot of times you get some very good deals, even get some comp tickets for those shows. It was great entertainment, and it was something to do. Most of those shows have gone away. Um, there was uh, a couple of years ago, I referred to it as the day the music died in the world of Caesars, where they, they shit-canned a bunch of shows, including Bronx Wanderers, including Tenors of Rock, including Crazy Girls. Uh, they closed uh, Cleopatra's Barge, which is um, a, a, an, an amazing venue in Caesar's Palace. They shut that down. They shut down the cabaret at, uh, at the Paris. They closed all these lounges. They were figuring out different ways to utilize that space. And a lot of these shows kind of became a victim of that. Now, in chatting with with Vin, um, 
sort of away from the podcast, he was he's done a really good job in the past of taking me behind the curtain and explaining how expensive these shows are to run and produce and what's involved and what it takes to actually break even on these shows. And so people I don't think realize that it is it's tens of thousands of dollars a month, if not like up near hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to run these shows. And when you've got tons of comp tickets going out, you've got discounted tickets going out, you've got half empty venues that you're playing to, but you're not getting any kind of discount on your rent or, or what you're, you're paying to be there. Oh yes. Did I mention that the artists have to rent the spaces from the casinos and they have to pay to market within the casinos? Basically, if they want to put a a poster of themselves up inside the casino, that costs the producers of the show or the artists, whoever happen to be running the show, that costs the money to do. So it's it's been this interesting, weird situation where Vin was explaining to me that essentially the Bronx Wanderers, they can go and do a show at the Westgate, which they did for the last year. And I, my wife and I saw them at the Westgate back uh, not this past trip, but the trip previous back in December 2021. And it was excellent. It was a great little spot, very intimate room. It was it was excellent. It was an excellent show. Um, but they can go in there and kill themselves eight days a week or eight shows a week, wrecking their voice, busting their asses, making very little money. Or they can do one weekend a month at an off-strip casino and then go out on tour for the other two weeks of the month or three weeks of the month. And during that tour, in three weeks, make the same amount of money that they would make in a year in Las Vegas. So Vin is going to come on the podcast. Him and I are going to sit down and have a very honest conversation about the state of entertainment in Las Vegas. And of course, talk about what the Brock's Wanderers are are currently up to right now and what they've got going on and how that all relates to uh, the whole problem with with small shows, which which again is, I think, going to be an excellent conversation. Uh, I'm also going to be chatting with a guy by the name of Joe Pennington, who's involved with the Evil Knievel Museum, in which I currently is in Topeka, Kansas. And the Evil Knievel Museum is moving to Las Vegas which is very, very cool. Now, Evil Knievel has a huge connection to Las Vegas in that, of course, the uh, he's most famous for, uh, probably most famous, for the jump over the fountains at Caesar's Palace. This was in the late 1960s, I want to say 1968, 1969, somewhere in there. And, of course, he epically failed at the jump. Like, it was it was just a, an absolute... Uh, disaster. Uh, Evil Knievel was was horribly injured. He was told he'd never walk again. He definitely would never ride a motorcycle again. Um, he had internal injuries. He had broken bones. All of these things. Um, of course, he did go on to walk again. He did go on to ride again. He had a very long career and a very uh, lucrative career uh, performing motorcycle stunts. So um, Joe is actually going to be in Vegas attending the same conference that I am, the Podcast Movements Evolution Conference, because he's been put in charge of putting together an Evil Knievel podcast. So I wanted to sit down and have a conversation with Joe about Evil Knievel, talk about Evil Knievel's history, the Vegas connection, all of those things. As well, um, Joe wants to talk to me about Las Vegas and have a conversation with me about Las Vegas. So we're going to do a little a little episode uh, swappy swap little tradey trade, if you will. So I don't know what this hand gesture was. Tradey trade? I, <laughs> I don't know what that was. People watching the YouTube uh, feed or the YouTube uh, video of this are looking at going, Jeff, what are you doing with your hands? People listening on the podcast version are going, I need to go to the YouTube version to see what Jeff's doing with his hands. Anyways, uh, looking forward to conversation with Joe Pennington about that. Uh, Mark Hoke is also going to be joining me. Mark is the host of a wrestling radio show and wrestling podcast uh, based out of Las Vegas. Um, he does a weekly radio show talking about what's going on in the world of wrestling and WWE and uh, AEW and, and everything else. He's also a huge fan of uh, vintage WWE, a.k.a. WWF. Now, WrestleMania 9 is going to be celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. It was uh, April 4th, 1993, WrestleMania 9 
was held at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. This was the most opulent WrestleMania ever held. I mean, there was Caesar, there was Cleopatra. It was uh, uh, basically it was billed as the world's largest toga party. Jim Ross, who is uh, a staple of WWE programming now, or used to be, he's now moved on from WWE into other ventures. But of course, he was a, a staple as a WWE commentator for many years through all of the the, the the parts of WWE and WWF that I was a big fan of in the late 90s, early 2000s, with the Attitude Era, that whole thing, that was actually, WrestleMania 9 was Jim Ross's first gig, which is really, really cool. Um, some, some epic matches at that particular event. Um, you had uh, the likes of The Undertaker taking on the Giant Gonzalez, which was a disaster of a match, just an absolute terrible, terrible match. Giant Gonzalez was a, a horrible performer. Um, you had uh, uh, Hulk Hogan and Bruce the Barber Beefcake taking on Erwin R. Scheister, IRS, and uh, Ted DiBiase. They, of course, that was the, the Mega Maniacs versus Money, Inc. And, of course, the main event of the night was uh, a, a boy from my hometown, WWF champ, uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. From where I'm in right now, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Excellence of execution taking on Yokozuna in the main event. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, if you haven't watched it by now, I, I don't really think it's a spoiler alert. Can it be a spoiler alert if it's 30 years old? Uh, Bret Hart loses the match to Yokozuna. Uh, Hulk Hogan comes in out of the blue, takes on Yokozuna. Uh, wins this ridiculous 30-second match, wins the belt off Yokozuna, possibly the most ridiculous thing ever. Anyways, Mark and I are going to have a conversation about WrestleMania 9. We're going to talk about where the WWF was at at the time of that event. We're going to talk about the matches. We'll break down some of the big matches. We'll talk about some of the, the pomp and circumstance surrounding the event. And then also talk a little bit about the direction that WWF went after that particular WrestleMania. It was a very weird time in the history of WWF. Um, that early 90s was not really uh, a really great time for the WWF. They were getting away from um, the characters like Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage and starting to move towards some of the smaller guys in around that time, guys like Brett the Hitman Hart, things like that. Although that being said, Hulk Hogan, who appeared a lot smaller um, in that time of the year, I think I'd have to go back and check my WWF history, but I feel like 1993 was after the, the WWF steroid trials. I could be mistaken. If I'm wrong, somebody will correct me. Mark will correct me in this, uh, in our conversation. Anyways, looking forward to that. And then I'm also <laughs> four interviews booked. I must be out of my damn minds. Um, Petra Massey of the atomic saloon show at the Venetian. Um, I've seen atomic saloon show twice now. Uh, I talked about it in the last trip report, the January trip report. I had an opportunity to sit like the front row of atomic saloon, which by the way, is a great place to sit for atomic saloon. Um, Petra plays uh, one of the main characters in this. In fact, I would I would say the main character. She plays the part of Boozy Skunkton, who is the uh, the house madam of the Atomic Saloon. She runs the joint, and so I have set myself up with a, a conversation with Petra Massey, and I'm so looking forward to this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Atomic Saloon. I, I said it in the last uh, episode or the last trip report of the, uh, episode of the podcast. I should say, Atomic Saloon is. One of the best, if not the best shows in Las Vegas right now, not for the easily offended. Um, there's a lot of, uh, my grandfather would have called it blue humor. Um, <laughs> it's, I almost called it blue humor and then tried to save myself by saying my grandfather would have called it that I'd call it blue humor. Anyways, um, there's a lot of humor in there. That's not necessarily for everyone. You do have to be over 18 to attend the show. It's excellent stuff. And Spiegel World is doing some really, really cool stuff. So I would have a conversation with Petra about her time in Las Vegas. I want to talk to her about um, Atomic Saloon and her first impressions when they first started doing the show. They actually, um, they tested the show or or workshopped it at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. And, uh, and so I want to talk to her and get her impressions about when she first read through the script and saw what they were going to be doing, uh, talked to her about how the show has evolved because there have been some changes to the show over the last few years uh, as it's been running at uh, at the Venetian. 
and talk a little bit about the future of Atomic Saloon and Spiegel World in Vegas as well. Spiegel World is, it's nice to see an entertainment company, um, by contrast, when I was mentioning earlier about how uh, Caesars and some of the big hotels are getting away from um, production shows and smaller shows and focusing on um, these massive residency shows that like Adele and Bruno Mars and Lady Gaga and, and the shows like that, getting away from, from the smaller shows and focusing on those big shows as opposed to Spiegel World, which is growing. Um, I mean, Absinthe is the original Spiegel World show in Las Vegas. It's been there forever. I think Absinthe has been there for 10 years now, if I'm not mistaken. And again, much like Atomic Saloon, a great show, an amazing variety show. And uh, again, offensive, but offensive to everyone, equally offending everybody, not just one group, every group of people. It's fun stuff. Um, I will say when my wife and I went and saw Absinthe several years ago, there were people that got up and walked out. <laughs> I haven't seen that in, in, uh, Atomic Saloon. I haven't seen anybody walk out of the show, which, which is, is good. That's a good thing. It, Absinthe really does push it a lot further than, than Atomic Saloon does though. Um, anyways, it's nice to see Spiegel World growing. They've got lots of stuff on the go. So I want to have a talk with Petra about all of that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, lots of other stuff in the works as well, not related to interviews that I'm doing in Vegas on this particular trip. Um, some episodes that I'm going to be working on. We're talking um, mob history. Uh, more mob history. You guys love the mob history, which is great. Jeff Schumacher from the Mob Museum has been a, a guest on the podcast a bunch of times. He's one of my favorite people in the world to talk to. Um, we are going to have him back on the podcast to talk about Benny Binion. Um, of course, the, the Binion's name, synonymous with Las Vegas. There's quite a legacy there. Of course, there was Binion's Horseshoe Casino. Um, he was responsible for uh, helping to establish the World Series of Poker, which continues to this day and has since made the move uh, from uh, Binion's on Fremont Street. Now is going to be held at the new Horseshoe, formerly Bally's, on the Strip. Um, so, of course, there's that. He has a very lengthy criminal history, so we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about the casino years. We'll talk about Binion's Horseshoe. And then uh, talk about the kidnapping and the murder of his son, Ted Binion. So some really fascinating stuff there with mob history as well. I want to have Claire White back on the podcast during our conversation about Liberace. Um, she did a really good job of establishing the context of the, the mob museum in the history of Vegas and the world of entertainment. And she kind of briefly touched on it with mob involvement in the entertainment scene in Las Vegas. And so I want to have a conversation with her and go uh, somewhat in depth about some of the, the alleged connections between the entertainment scene and uh, organized crime in Las Vegas through the establishment of of several of the original casinos. For example, just throwing out the Stardust and the Tropicana uh, and the involvement there of organized crime in those properties particularly and how that relates to um, the entertainment world. So I want to have Claire White back on to talk about that. Anthony and Megan from Mayhem in the Desert. Uh, I've had them on a couple of times to talk about... Um, crime history in Las Vegas. Uh, Anthony joined me to talk about the barrels, uh, the bodies in the barrels at Lake Mead when that was kind of a thing, when that was coming up. I want to have them back on. Uh, lots of stuff in their world going on. They are doing very, very well with Mayhem in the Desert. Things are growing big time for them right now. Um, they have entered into the YouTube space and have started putting together videos, which is very, very cool. So I want to have a conversation with them and talk a little bit about what they're doing with that. And then also talk about some more uh, Vegas crime. I want to talk about Vegas serial killers. Dark and morbid. Yes but I do want to talk about that with them. And then bombings in Las Vegas. Um, I did not realize how many high profile bombings there have been in Las Vegas. Um, off the top of your head, you can probably think of one right away. If you've ever seen the movie Casino, that would be the, uh, the car bombing. Um, in the movie, it was Ace Rothstein. In real life, it was uh, Lefty Rosenthal. Um, 
that was uh, the bombing outside the Tony Romas uh, down uh, near Fremont Street, um, a car bomb that assassination attempt on on his life uh, a crime which really to this day still remains unsolved nobody knows exactly who who planned that but there was uh there was an airplane that was blown up on the tarmac at uh, at the time um mccarran airport in las vegas uh there was also a, a a bombing uh in the parking garage at the luxor and so again there's some really cool stuff here some cool vegas history that i i want to go in and, and talk about with them so anthony and megan always great guests love having them on the podcast i've been trying to work on getting a hold of a vegas promoter to talk about pool parties and day clubs i hearkening back to the earlier uh conversation about um being a completely unhip non-cool person I'm kind of thinking that's starting to work against me <laughs> because I have reached out to several Vegas promoters. I've sent emails, I've sent text messages, I've reached out on Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter, and I've sent messages through all those channels explaining what it is I want to do. Basically, I want to get somebody on to have a conversation about pool parties. Pool season is approaching. Uh, you're, you're getting set to go to Vegas and start hanging out poolside and of course day clubs pool parties always a good time and a big deal in las vegas but a lot of people aren't really familiar with how they work myself included now again going back to my conversation about going to dre's and hanging out at a nightclub least cool guy in the room not going to spend time at a pool party it looks terrible to me but I know that there's people that love it and there's people that have questions about it. I want to talk about etiquette. I want to talk about pool party do's and don'ts. I want to talk about what you should or shouldn't wear to one of these pool parties, what you should expect if you're going to a pool party. Talk a little bit about safety at these pool parties because bad shit can happen at these events. I want to get the inside track on the best pool parties in Las Vegas. All of these things are things that I want to talk about, but I need somebody to talk about me, uh, talk about them with me is what I need. Radio silence from these guys. I don't know how they get clients. Anyways, I'm going to be in Vegas. I always see these promoters when you're walking down the Vegas strip. I always see them standing there trying to, trying to loop people in. What I think I need to do is find myself a group of younger, more attractive, hipper people who, who can sort of get grabbed by these promoter guys. And if they get grabbed by them, have me step in and go, Hey, can I get you on my podcast to talk about pool parties and, and, and the, the, the day club scene and all that kind of stuff. Cause I'm really starting to believe that's the only way it's going to happen for me. Um, I also want to talk about a serious topic on the podcast and, and I do occasionally, um, get a little bit serious on the podcast, not often, but, but sometimes we do go a little bit serious. Um, did you know, I was going to say fun fact, but this is not a fun fact. This is a terrible fact in the top 10 cities in the U S for human trafficking and sex trafficking, Las Vegas is ranked number four. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Vegas is ranked fourth in the top 10 cities for human, tra uh, human trafficking and sex trafficking. So I, I kind of feel like it would be a good idea to, and make for an interesting conversation to talk about, uh, human trafficking and sex trafficking in Las Vegas. I, I talk about the dangers of trafficking, um, how to spot human trafficking and what to do if you spot it. I know, uh, if you've ever been in the bathroom, at Las Vegas airport. And I'm sure you have, because that's the first thing. It's the first place everybody goes as soon as they get off the plane, right? You head right for the men's room, right for the ladies room. Uh, I can't speak for the ladies room, but I know in the men's room on the backs of the doors, um, for each of the stalls, there's actually a sticker that says, um, are you a victim of human trafficking? Are you being trafficked? Have you spotted suspected trafficking? If so, call this 1-800 number. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, how to avoid human trafficking and sex trafficking in Las Vegas. And you might recall way back in episode number uh, 21, I had Charles H. Berry, who's a, a casino security and corporate security expert on the podcast. And we were talking about um, 
new and emerging threats to casino security. And I would never even would have thought about it, but he mentioned human trafficking as being uh, one of the big ones, um, one of the big new and emerging threats. So I uh, want to have a conversation uh, and talk about it. I've, I've, put together a list of potential guests and people that I want to uh, maybe reach out to, to see about bringing on the podcast. Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting conversation. It's going to be a heavy conversation. It's going to be a very deep one. So wherever I slot that episode in, I promise you, I will follow it up with something light and fluffy and fun to talk about. Because as I say, this is not going to be a fun topic, but I think it's going to be a really interesting topic. And I think it's going to be a very, um, important one to talk about as well. Now, uh, let's chat about some of the other stuff that we've got in the works right now going on with the podcast. Um, let's talk video. For those of you that are on the YouTube channel right now, youtube.com slash Jeff does Vegas. You are watching the video version of this episode of the podcast, this bonus episode of the podcast. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, I want to start working on producing more videos for the YouTube channel. Um, I don't know it's very time consuming. And, and I, I had an idea of how time consuming it was, but I don't think I quite realized exactly how time consuming it can be. So I, I have started doing some limited video. If you've watched, or if you've been on the YouTube channel and checked out, uh, the most recent episodes of the podcast, you'll see that I've actually recorded uh, video intros to those podcasts, which is kind of cool. Um, something I am starting to work on is the interviews that I do with people when I do them by Zoom. Uh, I'm going to start recording that video and start including that uh, on the YouTube channel and putting together uh, video episodes of the podcast. So that's actually going to be a lot of fun as well. And I'm not going to get into um, full on uh, vlogging. There's lots of people that do Vegas vlogs. There's tons of great Vegas vlogs out there. Um, I am not a video person. I'm not all that great at shooting video or editing video, at least right now. I mean, I'm sure the more I do it, the better it'll get. But right now, I'm not all that great at it. So I'm not going to get quite into doing full-on video vlogs, but I think I am going to start... Uh, leaning a little bit more towards doing maybe some video trip reports or editing some little things together. I have some video from my trip in January that I want to try to put together here um, and put together in a little a video for YouTube. So again, um, that's something that I am working on and I am trying to move forward on, but I have a real job <laughs> in addition to trying to put together the podcast for you guys. So Again, video being as time consuming as it is, it does take some time and it, it can be a little bit hard uh, to put together. So uh, again, by all means, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeff does Vegas. If you like what you see there, tell a friend and uh, and I promise you're going to start seeing more video showing up there. Uh, something else that I've just recently launched that I'm very, very proud of, and uh, it's taken a little bit of time to put this together, but uh, looking forward to getting into it. Um, I've, they're called Jeff does Vegas vacation consultations. And I came up with that name because it rhymes. I tried in my own brain. I tried coming up with all kinds of stuff, but as you can tell, based on the name of this podcast, Jeff does Vegas, um, I'm not all that creative when it comes to the naming of things. So, um, yeah. So <laughs> the, the Jeff does Vegas vacation consultations. What is it? Well, Essentially, it's a chance for you uh, to go one-on-one -on -one with me virtually and let me help you plan your Vegas vacation. I'm not a travel agent. I'm not a travel professional. I am simply a consultant. I am just going to give you some ideas. This is your opportunity to sit down with me um, and get my thoughts on uh, hotels, restaurants, shows, attractions, things to do, where to go, what to see, most importantly, what to avoid, things you shouldn't do while you're in Las Vegas. I want to have those conversations with you. I, I see so many people posting on social media and going on the various um, Vegas YouTube channels and um, basically uh, uh, posting questions and getting 200 answers from people and 90% of them are wrong. 
And, and I don't mean when I say wrong, I don't mean they're like, in my opinion, they're wrong. I mean, factually, they are wrong. Um, my opinion, they are also wrong, but <laughs> factually, they are incorrect. So the way I look at it is this, is you could go on Facebook, you could go on social media, you could ask 100 questions and get answers from dozens of strangers, most of which are incorrect. You could skim TripAdvisor or various review sites and scroll through all these reviews, half of which are probably fake or paid reviews. Or you can sit down with me, somebody that's been to Vegas like 30 plus times in the last seven years and keeping in mind that two of those years I was unable to go to Las Vegas. Um, you could sit down with me and get my input on your trip. So if you're a first timer, it's going to be great for you. If you're a frequent Vegas visitor, maybe there's something I've done in Las Vegas that you're interested in doing. You want to know a little bit more about that. By all means, uh, we're going to be able to have that conversation as well. Um, any conversation you want. So 30, 60, 90 minute sessions. That's what I offer uh, as well. If you are a member of uh, the Jeff Does Vegas Insiders Club, if you've signed up to be a Jeff Does Vegas Insider, you get, check it out, one free 30-minute session. It's very, very cool. Uh, if you want to know more, you can do your booking, get all the details. Uh, go to the website at jeffdoesvegas.com and find out everything you need to know about Jeff Does Vegas vacation consultations. Now, I briefly mentioned the Jeff Does Vegas Insiders Club. First of all, thanks to everyone who has signed up uh, to become a Jeff Does Vegas Insider. You you have no idea how much I appreciate it. It's basically, it's an opportunity for you to sign up. Five bucks a month gets you some really cool stuff. Um, we'll go into that in a second and, and, and let you know uh, what you get. But the first time I had somebody sign up, the very first Jeff Does Vegas Insider that signed up when I got that notification saying, someone is paying you to do this. I was like, holy shit, is that ever cool? Like, you guys are amazing. You're amazing listeners. You're amazing fans of the podcast. All of you are are wonderful. Uh, but for those of you that are are forking out the cash every month to to be an insider, you guys are are absolutely amazing. So again, thank you to everybody that's already become a, a Jeff Does Vegas insider. So what is the Jeff Does Vegas Insiders Club? Well, really simple. Five bucks US a month gets you some really cool stuff, including early access to new episodes of the podcast, commercial free versions of the podcast, which is kind of important now because I have started running some commercials on the podcast. You may have noticed that. So again, commercial free versions of the podcast, you get access to that exclusive bonus content. Um, I've posted some really cool video stuff over the last little while, some exclusive bonuses there, some exclusive audio. Uh, I've put up pictures, I've put up um, video, uh, all this kind of stuff. So again, exclusive content for insiders. Working on the virtual and in-person meetups. I'm trying to figure out um, a little bit of a hook and how to do this. So uh, Jeff Does Vegas Insiders, you guys will get free access to these in-person meetups and these virtual meetups. And, and I'm working on getting all this stuff together. I promise this is going to be the year when we do this for those of you that are insiders. And then, of course, you also get that aforementioned 30-minute vacation consultation. Um, you get that absolutely free. You get one of those as part of your membership with Jeff Does Vegas. There's also some cool uh, merchandise that you get. There's stickers that go out. There's a, a few other things that go out as well. So again, uh, if you want to know more about this, you want to get yourself signed up, I, I invite you to uh, head over to the website, uh, jeffdoesvegas.com. You can click on the JDV Insiders link at the top of the page, or you can just go there directly, patreon.com slash jeffdoesvegas. And that pretty much wraps things up here for this uh, special bonus episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on the YouTube and watching the video version. And thank you so much for being a, a listener of the podcast. Again, I really do appreciate it. When I started doing this podcast back almost five years ago now, um, four years ago, I guess it was 2019 when I really got into the swing of it. Um, it started as a passion project. And I just thought, you know, if people listen, it's going to be really cool. 
and people have listened. Uh, 180,000 plus total downloads, um, 140 odd regular episodes, tons of bonus episodes, lots of cool stuff. I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of cool people, uh, interact with a lot of cool guests, and interact with a lot of cool listeners, listeners like you and, uh, and now viewers like you. So again, thank you for taking time to uh, to listen and watch. I really do appreciate it. Uh, please make sure you follow me. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Jeff Does Vegas. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeff Does Vegas. And of course, for all the past episodes, show notes, everything you want to know about the podcast, you can head to the website at jeffdoesvegas.com. Thank you so much. And until next time, have yourself a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it happens to be. I hope you're having a wonderful one.